Sonic! The voice is mostly carried by the wind, but it reaches the hedgehog's ears nonetheless. He looks up, and through the darkness, Sonic sees Tails flying down to him with Amy dangling from his arms. Sonic stands up and waits for the two to land. As he does so, he can't help but rub his arms together in a futile effort to warm up. The weather is freezing. Goosebumps pop up under the Mobian's fur, and his teeth chatter rapidly. From the look of it, Tails and Amy aren't faring much better, with both of them shivering as they start to land. How a place as desolate and barren as Ice Cap can even exist right next to a bustling grand city like Metropolis is a wonder to Sonic, who starts running in place to keep his body moving. Amy lets go of Tails once it's safe enough to fall to the ground. Right as her shoes touch the snow, she lunges at the blue hedgehog in front of her in a tightening embrace, catching him off guard. Thank goodness you're okay, Sonic! We saw the plane go down and we didn't know if you'd be alright! I'm fine, Amy. He almost lets go of Amy by instinct, but doesn't once he feels the warmth of another Mobian's body. He hangs on a little longer before finally letting go, hoping Amy doesn't get any wrong ideas, which, judging by her obvious blushing and white smile, appears to be the case. Tails finally lands, staring at the ball of fire three meters to his right. Well, so much for the tornado. So what now, Sonic? First, we find Knuckles. A guy as tough as he is had to have survived a fall like that. After, we head north after Robotnik and his band of misfits. I can only carry one person at a time for long runs, and I'm not leaving anyone alone again. Especially with that metal clone probably lurking around. So we stick together and find a vehicle. Once you guys are all somewhere... not stranded, I'm chasing after those emeralds. Without the tornado? Don't worry about me, little buddy. I have my legs. But how will I keep up with you? Tails... <sighs> I've put you in danger long enough. I'm getting you and the others to someplace safe, and I'm fixing this mess. I can still catch up and maybe get at least one emerald before Robotnik collects all seven. But I thought... Look! Amy points to a red figure in the sky. Everyone looks up and sees Knuckles. With all of his limbs stretched out, gliding to their location. Sonic can't help but grin. This guy is just full of surprises. After a few moments, Knuckles lands in front of the other three. Hey, Nux. Glad you... Where is it? Where is what? What else? The Emerald. Tell me you have it with you. Look, just calm. Calm? Calm? How am I supposed to be calm? You just let that Eggman creep make off with our Emerald, and now we're in the middle of nowhere! Sonic crosses his arms, visibly ticked off. That's not fair, Knuckles. Is it? If we would have just taken the Emerald like I suggested, then none of this would have happened. Eggman would be stopped, and I'd be back on my island. This is your fault! Oh yeah? Which one of us got tricked by Robotnik back on Angel Island again? If you had a brain up there in that thick skull of yours, you would have seen through his plot, and we would have won right there! Knuckles glares at Sonic with eyes yearning for blood. He starts approaching the hedgehog who stands his ground, both of his fists clenched. Stop fighting! Both Sonic and Knuckles stop in their tracks, caught off guard by the young hedgehog's aggression. This is not the time, guys! <sighs> Look, she's right, Knuckles. Let's just- No! I'm done here. The Echidna turns in the other direction, storming off. I'll never listen to you again. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. Fine. Tails, Amy, let's go. Before either of the two can interject, Sonic has already turned around and is heading in the opposite direction of Knuckles. Behind him, Shadow hears the automated door he just walked through slide open. He and whoever it is behind him are in a linear gray metal hallway lined with window hatches on its left side. The floor is a dark blue, and the entirety of the hallway, like the rest of the egg carrier, is lit by the dim, white lights that run along the ceiling of the aircraft. Now that I think about it, I didn't hear a blast go off either. What was that about? Shadow stops in the middle of the hallway. Why do you care? Don't you have better things to do? Why do you insist on talking to me? Because I can't figure you out. 
one minute you're aiding Eggman in conquering the world for the sake of your own vendetta, and the next, you can't bring yourself to attack random strangers. Could you? Shadow turns around facing Rouge. Did you? You mean the fox and pink hedgehog? I didn't have to. They were two scared kids who gave up the emerald in no time. And what if they didn't? You know, you won't be exempt from blame once Eggman gets what he wants. You have just as much to do with this as I, Omega, and that jackal, regardless of your motives. What are you getting at? You're not a killer. I was trained to be. I was made to be. So refrain from questioning my resolve, Bat. Then, what stopped you from unleashing that Chaos Blast, huh, Shadow? If you're prepared for the whole world to be under Eggman's destructive rule, then what stopped you from attacking those kids? I only saw three of them. I saw the Fox, the Echidna, and Mobius' war hero. Yes, they were just targets. The other... I looked into her eyes. I didn't see a pink hedgehog. At that moment, I saw Maria. Shadow turns back around. Rouge, processing this, lowers her head. You're not a killer either, Shadow. For your sake, I hope you realize that soon. At least before it's too late for you to turn back. After a moment of silence, Shadow raises his head and continues down the hall, not saying another word. The only discomfort of Sonic that rivals the freezing cold and the immense fatigue of not having slept for two days straight is the thought that for every second he wastes walking, Robotnik is widening the gap between them at lightning speed. Behind him trails Amy and Tails, who both look nearly as tired as he is. How did I drag these two into this? Just like when he was on the tornado, his legs shake and long for some speed. The anxiety-inducing thought that Robotnik has secured the next emerald certainly doesn't help. Sonic looks ahead and is halfway shocked when he sees the sun breaking over the horizon ahead, its light shining through the clouds and giving the group some much-needed sunlight. This is taking too long. Sonic stops and turns around, glancing at Amy and Tails who come to a halt. Hey, I don't think my creepy twin is hanging around anymore. I'm gonna go scout ahead and see if I can find some place with a phone or a snowmobile so I can get you two out of here. Be back in a jiffy. Sonic! Tails is unable to get a word out before his friend disappears, and a faint trail of blue light materializes in his place. Ah. <sighs> huh. He doesn't like staying in one place for too long, does he? He's even cooler than I imagined. Tails doesn't respond. He stops walking and lowers his head to the ground. Amy notices and stops beside him. Tails, what is it? What's the matter? For a moment, the fox doesn't say anything. Then he finally responds. This is all my fault. Why? Because we got cornered by two bad guys in an alley? There was nothing either of us could do, Tails. Besides, I was the one who gave him the emerald. If the blame falls on anyone, it's me. You don't understand. He trusted me. He counted on me. And I let him down. Tails plops down on the snow below and looks up at Amy. I've always wanted to be like him. He's just so cool, you know? He always knows what to do. He's always sure of himself. And he's so brave. Even when all of us were scared of Eggman, he taught the world how to stand up to bullies. At least... He taught me how to stand up to mine. Amy joins Tails in the snow, taking a seat next to him. It sounds stupid, but when I'm around him, I don't feel like Miles Tails Prower anymore. I feel like something more. I feel like I matter. Like, like I can do all the things that Sonic can. But now I've ruined it. He doesn't need me anymore. I think he finally realizes how much of a fraud I am. That's enough! The fierceness of Amy's demand startles the young boy, nearly making him jump back. Listen, Tails, I haven't known you for very long, but you need to get yourself together. If I got the sprite, that device of yours is the only reason you've been able to attract those emeralds in the first place, right? Yeah, but it's just a device. That you built! And that plane of yours. How many kids your age do you see flying a plane around? None. Tails is unable to hide his small, involuntary smile. It's sad! 
Exactly! And none of that even comes close to your bravery. Back there in the alley, most people would have broke if they were in your shoes and surrendered immediately. But you held your ground and were willing to protect that emerald with your life. Honestly, it's no wonder Sana keeps you around. He'd be crazy not to! Do... Do you really mean that? Most definitely. Look, I don't know why Sonic is deciding to go about this solo, but if I had to guess, he's probably worried about you, Tails. He cares for you. Not as he would a stranger, but as a friend. But if you want to let him know you can handle this, you have to stand up for yourself and make him understand. Because while he may be heroic, brave, good-natured, charming, handsome, he'd have to be an idiot to doubt your capabilities. Tails' micro-smile grows into a full one, and he gets to his feet alongside Amy. You're right. Thanks, Amy. Amy returns the joyful boys a smile with one of her own, along with a thumbs up. In all of his life, Zero has never felt the way he does at this very moment. A weird sensation it truly is. Before, in his past defeats, which were extraordinarily rare, the proud Jackal would feel a sense of enragement. Rage he could then use to accomplish his goals and come back with a vengeance so fierce none could challenge it. That intense rage is still very much present and is not going away anytime soon. But alongside it lies an unfamiliar feeling, more so a thought. One the Jackal tries to shove out of his mind. The unshakable reality that maybe just maybe, he is out of his depth. When challenging the blue speedster, he was mocked. The echidna rendered him unconscious with a single blow. Even when he had a clear line of sight on his target, he ended up blowing it and hitting the metal copy instead. Every chance he has been given to reclaim his former glory has been squandered by none other than himself. And that was more infuriating than anything he could bear. He currently walks through the lower decks of the ship, deep in thought about this ever-so-blatant reality. His hands are bald and unstable fists. Eggman looked as if he was on the verge of murdering him the last time they spoke. That could have been so easily and so effortlessly the end. If the thought about his lack of capabilities was unbearable, Zero remembers something that makes him even more frustrated. As he stood there, being looked down on like a disposable nuisance, he felt something he hadn't felt in years. And that was fear. Just the word makes Zero want to punch the nearest wall when his ears pick up something. Down the hall, he can so clearly hear Eggman talking in a hushed voice, which surprises Zero. It almost seemed as if the doctor never left the control room. What could he possibly be doing down here in the lower decks? Zero almost stepped away to avoid detection when something stopped him in his tracks. The familiar unmistakable voice of Metal Sonic. It's not his added presence, but what Metal Sonic says that sparks Zero's curiosity. Such power. Those two words capture all of the Jackal's interest. He peers down the long hall and sees that both Eggman and Metal Sonic are both in the same room to the right of it. With the elegance of a feline, Zero makes it to the wall just outside the small room. Where he is now, he can hear what the two are saying more clearly. This time, it'll be different. I had the tools, the machinery, and the smarts. But that pathetic clone of yours got in my way. Not this time. No, with the Phantom Ruby's power, reality will be what I will it. Your glory will know no bounds. Zero slowly peers around the wall to get a glimpse of what the two could possibly be talking about. Upon doing so, his eyes widen in awe. Eggman and his metal henchmen stand in a small compact room surrounded by tangled wires and brown boxes. What has the jackal shocked is what the mad machinist holds in his gloved hand. A purple ruby-like gem that glows brightly in his palm. Zero has seen the Chaos Emeralds up close and was surprised when he wasn't as wowed by them as he expected. This, however, this is something else. I've already charged it with the three Emeralds we've collected thus far. They're no longer of any use to me, but just in case, I've stored them in my safe at the control room. It'll be a good way to test that spy's loyalty 
and see if she takes the bait. There is simply too much riding on this to afford traitors! I must admit, even I was surprised at my own genius when creating such power. It just needs chaos energy to be fully operational. Metal Sonic kneels before the man before him, basking in his creator's shining glory. Just four more emeralds and the world will be yours, Doctor. I couldn't have said it better myself, but I might as well try. Just four more emeralds and the world will be mine. Before he gets spotted, Zero leaves his spot and silently hurries away, unsure of what to do with the information he's just uncovered. The worst was supposed to be over. When Knuckles witnessed the slow, devastating extinction of his community as a mere child, he was confident that it was all over for him. That no matter where he went or what he did, none of it would bring any happiness, any purpose. That was until he stumbled upon it on his first morning of being completely alone. The Emerald Shrine that had been the sole cause of his clan's immense misfortune. He almost grabbed the remaining green emerald and threw it to the sea. But when his gloved hand neared the shining stone, it stopped. Looking at the emerald, the mournful echidna realized that the mystical gem is all that was left. He and it alone are the only evidence that his family ever existed at all. That moment brought him happiness. With it, it brought him purpose. If he could just hold on to the one remnant of his family's accomplishments, his home will stay alive. His legacy will stay alive. That very thought is what kept the proud warrior content as he spent all of his days exploring the island and protecting the emerald from any who would dare threaten it. How he went from such a simple task to wandering alone in the snow eludes him. Back home, the high altitude winds and chilly air would result in freezing temperatures, so the coldness of ice cap barely phases him. However, Knuckles wishes that was his main concern. No, as he drifts aimlessly through the barren terrain, his mind thinks of how far his emerald is getting from him. With it, his family legacy also becoming unreachable. When he yelled at the blue buffoon, all that consumed him was anger and insatiable frustration. But after a long walk, the defeated Echidna has calmed down, and instead, his previous anger has been replaced with a deep vacuum of hopelessness. As annoying as Sonic was, it wasn't him who got tricked by Eggman. It wasn't him that lost to that Black Hedgehog. It wasn't him who was responsible for the Emerald's safety. Knuckles tearfully accepts that the blame falls on none other than himself. What's worse is his one chance to win back his honor and make his clan proud is gone. When he left Sonic, he left the one person who can catch up to Eggman and his forces. He gave up his one opportunity to make things right. This is all my fault. He stops in his tracks, looking up at the cloudy gray sky, deep in thought over what to do. He can't go back to a home that's dead a home that he killed. However, he can't go after Eggman by himself. There is nothing to do. Nowhere to go. No. No. I need to stop feeling sorry for myself. Too many of my people died for me to give up now. I'll return to that hedgehog. And whether he likes it or not, we're going to stop Eggman and get my emerald back together. With a renewed, fiery determination, Knuckles turns back the way he came and runs as fast as his legs will let him. That was fast. Rouge walks alongside her fellow Team Dark comrades to the hangar of the Egg Carrier. When she voiced the same sentiment to Shadow earlier, his response was, it's no surprise. This aircraft is the fastest vehicle I've ever seen, and it's not even close. From here on out, we should be retrieving these emeralds much quicker and without trouble. At this point, the doctor has already won. That last sentence struck an unfamiliar chord with the jaded bat. 
It, in a sense, echoed something the Black Hedgehog had confronted her about back in the hallway outside of the Egg Carrier's control room. You know, you won't be exempt from blame once Eggman gets what he wants. Those were the words Shadow had told her, and while they were immediately dismissed in Rouge's mind, they hadn't fully left. With only four simple heists to go, the reality of Eggman's victory is only drawing nearer. It still remains unclear what he intends to do with the Emeralds, but knowing his ingenuity and ambition, it can't be anything good. There's no turning back now. Rouge's thoughts to simply steal Eggman's remaining jewels and bail disappeared once she stumbled upon the safe that was brought to the control room. The doctor had the discreetency of an elephant. It was immediately obvious what the purpose of that safe was. To test her loyalty. She's being watched. A move at this point would be too risky. Whether she likes it or not, she has to see this through to the end. Or rather, Mobius's end. Shadow has been noticeably quiet ever since he and Rouge's last conversation. She wonders if that pink hedgehog is still in his thoughts. In a way, the spy feels greatly sympathetic towards her ally. Once this is all over, someone of his nature will undoubtedly live to regret what he has done. What he said earlier about being a killer seemed as if it was projection. Rouge knows who and what she is. Her entire life, she has not cared for anyone or anything. It has always been about her score and nothing more. Someone like that can live with empowering an unpathetic, cruel tyrant. However, a person who's experienced love, who knows how to love, simply can't. E-123 Omega, on the other hand, seems completely at peace with what's happening, which isn't a surprise to either of his two allies. After all, he's simply a machine, a program built for one specific purpose. Despite his ego and set of... interesting values, surely he can't be sentient. But with how much personality and emotion Sonic's metal counterpart has exhibited, it is enough to make the Bat question if she's right for assuming so. So... Where are we this time? Ice cap. Uh, should have packed a sweater. You sure your wives won't freeze up in that weather, Omega? Do not insult me with such obvious questions. It will take more than frozen water crystals to take me offline. You're the ones that should be concerned. Your weak Mobian bodies are easily susceptible to intense temperatures. Consider sitting this one out. Aww. Are you worried about us? To Rouge's immense surprise, she gets a simple... Yes. <laughs> Your concern is misplaced, machine. The ultimate life form does not need it. Being the ultimate life form is hardly a title. Try being the ultimate machine. What, like that metal hedgehog? I will end you. Ah, uh, you boys. Finally, the team comes up to the metal, automated door leading to the hangar. Catching Rouge's attention are footsteps that echo behind her team in the silent hallway. She turns around and sees Zero walking behind them with his usual frown that only intensifies when the spy makes eye contact. What are you looking at, jewel thief? Turn back around. Rouge only gives him a cheeky smile and turns to the metal, circular door that slides open. Nothing needs to be said. The Jackal is already having it rough, much to her amusement. Waiting in the hangar bay is Eggman and Metal Sonic who is standing at his side. About time you arrived! We have detected the fourth Chaos Emerald is somewhere around this miserable frozen tundra. I think Ice Cap is the perfect place to build my prisons, once my will becomes law. Anyways, prepare to deploy! Before anyone in Team Dark can reply, Zero cuts in front of them and quickly kneels. I am eternally grateful for the second chance, Doctor. Second? Isn't this your fourth? Oh, who can keep count at this point? You better be grateful because this will be your last. You'll ride with Metal Sonic and scout around the area. Even with victory assured, I refuse to take any chances. If you exhibit even the tiniest bit of foolishness or incompetence, don't even bother coming back. The hangar leading outside slowly opens, inviting a furious gust of wind to fly through the bay, enveloping everyone in ridiculously cold temperatures. 
What are you waiting for? Get out of here so I can close this thing! Quickly, Team Dark runs towards the hangar, and they each jump out from the invisible floating mass of metal and quickly descend to the ground. Meanwhile, Metal Sonic roughly grabs Zero's arm, jets out of the egg carrier with the jackal secured in its metal grasp. The hangar door finally closes. As Team Dark falls through the clouds and prepare to make a safe landing, unbeknownst to them, a curious blue hedgehog passing by stops in his tracks and watches them from a distance. A warning about just how brutal Ice Cap's weather would have done the Jackal great wonders as he's carried through the air by Metal Sonic. However, at this point, he's just lucky to be alive. Humiliated and belittled for sure, but it's better than being dead. The sun's endless light shines across the entirety of the barren tundra, with few notable landmarks aside from the massive mountain behind the two henchmen that Team Dark begin climbing. When leading the Jackal Squad, Zero and his team always took jobs in a variety of places. Grand Metropolis, Sunset Heights, and even the city of Soliana. There were only three places that were off-limits. Station Square, eventually Scrap Brain, and Ice Cap. This area is commonly known as a giant blank spot on Mobius's map, and for good reason. Strange place for a Chaos Emerald. Hey, machine. Do you think we'll find anyone all the way out here? If I do, they'll be eliminated. Such a response should have been expected. Zero rolls his eyes and looks down at the ground below him, which is currently speeding by in a blur. For the first time since this mission began, the confused mercenary notices just how fast they're going. Don't you think we're going too far away from Team Dark? In case you forgot. Our job is to protect them from those who'd be after the Emeralds. I haven't forgotten my objective mercenary. In fact, that is why we've flown about 300 miles from our designated area. <gasps> but it's only been about three minutes. You see, you're a liability, Jackal. Sorry for using the L word, but it's true. You're incompetent, rash, Useless in combat, and I just don't like you. The doctor built me for the sole purpose of disposing of his obstacles and seeing his plans through. And you are most certainly an obstacle. What? But he gave me another chance. You're going against his orders. Ah, I knew you defaulted that argument, you pathetic, fictitious organic. My master gave you another chance because his brilliant mind hasn't had the time to consider just how futile keeping you around is. So, I'm doing him and everyone else a favor. Don't worry. No one will miss you. You can't- Zero is cut off when Metal Sonic abruptly descends to the ground in a matter of seconds. Before he can even realize what's happening, the Jackal is let go and he lands face first in the snow. He coughs him up as the robot hedgehog looks down at him from the sky. I consider disposing of you myself, but you're not worthy of a death at my hand. So I'll leave you to Ice Cap's weather. Don't worry. Town is just 1,452 miles north. You can make it if you believe in yourself, champ. Wait! Zero holds up a pleading hand. Please don't leave me here! Ugh, you're so pathetic. Before Zero can say anything else, in a blink, Metal Sonic disappears into a small light way off in the distance. That being his thrusters. Zero launches a fist into the snow below him, a tear leaving his right eye. Ugh, did they really have to leave us out here? Amy continues tiringly trudging through the snow with tails falling behind. Don't get me wrong, I'm not mad. I could never get mad at Mobius' war hero. You seem to think very highly of Sonic. Do you have any interest? What? 
Amy stops in the snow and looks at Tails with a flustered smile. Where in the world did you get that idea, Tails? I mean, he is cool, heroic, brave, charming, Sonic is great, but... Did someone say my name? The pink hedgehog nearly jumps out of her skin, with Sonic nonchalantly standing behind her. Neither of the two even saw him coming, which isn't that much of a surprise. Nothing! We, we were talking about you, Sonic! Uh-huh. Tails' sly smile disappears once Amy turns to look at him, her death stare being felt in his soul. Sonic doesn't take notice. Look, you two. I did some scouting, and- Wait, Sonic. Tails walks up to him. There's something I need to say. Sure, but can it wait? I'm not helpless. The blue hedgehog hears this and immediately stops talking. I know I can't run as fast as you. I'm not strong, and I scare easily. But I'm smart, and I can help. When you asked me to help you stop Eggman, it meant the world to me. I don't want that to change, Sonic. Whatever lies ahead, you shouldn't face it alone. Because we're a team, and I'm your friend. So I'm coming along whether you like it or not. That last part came out without Tails meaning it too. Realizing his aggressive tone and seeing the shocked look on Sonic's face, the young boy instinctively recoils. Even Amy looks somewhat taken aback. As Tails opens his mouth to apologize, Sonic speaks. I came here to tell both of you that I found Eggman. Both Tails and Amy's eyes widen in disbelief at the unexpected news. His mercenaries are tracking the fourth emerald. The war hero's eyes narrow to Tails. So, let's go get him, partner. Tails smiles, his lip quivering. Right. Um, hello? Amy swings her Pinko Pinko hammer over her shoulder. You two didn't think I'd sit this one out, did you? I guess not. Sonic grabs both Tails and Amy's right hand. We're about to go really fast. Are you two ready? Before either of them can respond, or at the very least brace themselves, Sonic Woo! speeds off in the direction of the invisible egg carrier, with Amy and Tails holding on for dear life. In less than three minutes, the team of Emerald Hunters reaches the summit of the tall, snowy mountain. At the top, the increased intensity of the wind and weather is almost worth it for the gorgeous view it presents. Team Dark stands together, overlooking the never-ending sight of snow that's brightened greatly by the sun overhead. No one had to say a word. Once Rouge and Omega caught up with Shadow, who stood near the edge admiring the tundra, they both joined in to take in such a view. If this mission of theirs is guaranteed, Rouge knows a pretty sight like this will no longer exist once they succeed. But the pools of gems and invaluable treasures will surely be worth it. They have to be. Realizing she and the others are on the clock, the bat turns away and checks her scanner. That's weird. We're standing right on top of it. It should be right here. Perhaps we are. It's likely it's buried under snow. <sighs> Rouge pays attention to the scanner and aligns her position with the dot on the scanner. Shadow and Omega take notice of this and turns to the spy who puts the scanner away and starts cracking her fingers. No treasure escapes me. She jumps into the air. Once she hits the ground, instead of landing on her feet, she lands on her fists which, with the speed of a jackhammer, begins striking the snow-filled ground with powerful blows that slightly catch Shadow off guard. He and Omega watch as Rouge drills into the earth, her body disappearing completely into the snow. Well, I guess you fleshlings are useful for something after all. Shadow smirks, watching Rouge's newly created tunnel go deeper. She's quite the treasure hunter, all right. Back at the chemical plant, Shadow was certain he'd be dealing with dead weight throughout this quest. After all, what use was a jewel thief and a cocky robot? It amused him just how wrong he was for assuming. Who knew there'd be so much to admire about his initially reluctant teammates? Say, Omega, you talk down to organic creatures and yet you worship one. I'm curious, how does that work? Isn't it obvious? Natural life forms are prone to various malfunctions, are ruled by their worthless emotions, and lack the efficiency of machines. Eggman, however, is none of that. He is the greatest ruler Mobius will ever know. I guess there's no use arguing with a machine. Still, I think even you can see the contradiction in your own programming. Your will to be the best and overcome all obstacles is an inherent desire. One's personal goal. 
something usually found in those made of flesh and blood. I don't question my creation, nor what you would classify as feelings. I see no point as it in no way aids me in my objective. I guess we're more alike than I thought, Omega. Shadow is about to turn to Omega to ask another question when a blur of blue light enters the corner of his eye. In front of him and Omega is an uncanny mirror. Mobius' war hero, Sonic the Hedgehog. The relaxed team with a goofy grin on his face crosses his arms. <sighs> I'm getting tired of all these clones. How about you and the Tin Man over there make this easy and surrender? I'll put in a good word with Gun and they'll reduce your... Shadow reels his hand back. Chaos? Uh, of course. Spear! Sonic can feel that intense heat of the stranger's abnormal attack on one of his quills as his body dashes across the chilly air. Any slower, and they surely would have been disintegrated on impact. The yellow energy spear misses its target by a hair and leaves a small crater in the spot the blue hedgehog once stood. Sonic lands on his feet near the edge of the high formation. Not one for words, I see. What is there to discuss, war hero? Shadow reels his arm back and releases another devastating blast of concentrated energy. Now aware of the doppelganger's attack radius, Sonic easily speeds out of the way of the incoming energy spear and stands next to his previous spot. Are you another robot? You don't look like one. The other guy was way more challenging. Shadow pays no mind to Sonic's eased posture, a grin spreading on the Black Hedgehog's face. It would be wise not to confuse me for one of the Doctor's creations. Omega, get back! As E123 Omega steps away next to the hole Rouge is still digging through, Shadow presses his hands together. A red aura covers his body and grows steadily intense. Sonic takes a step back, prepared to dodge whatever this lackey is planning. His hands balls into fists and he gets into a running stance ready for anything. Shadow's glowing eyes burn into his. Now I will show you the ultimate power! Chaos? BLAST! A wave of blind, unmatched energy fiercely erupts from the Black Hedgehog, dematerializing all of the snow near him. Sonic just barely shields his face before he is struck by the burning blast, which knocks him to the ground. Every muscle in his body screams in protest as the Hedgehog slowly rises back up, with parts of his blue fur covered with ash. Shadow crosses his arms with confidence, but is then immediately taken aback when a gloved fist materializes in front of him. He only had enough time to register that it belonged to the war hero before he was knocked back. He catches himself before he stumbles to the ground, but it doesn't do him much good when a sudden sharp pain goes up his back, sending him into the air. It was Sonic's foot. His speed. The rumors don't do it justice. He crashes back onto the rocky mountain, tumbling across the ground. Shadow looks up and dashes right of Sonic's incoming fist. The focused hedgehog responds with a roundhouse kick, but the quick war hero ducks under it and retaliates with an uppercut that Shadow quickly blocks with his arm. Chaos Spear! A spear of yellow energy flies towards his challenger. Sonic backflips out of the way of the incoming blow, but as he lands, he's put on the ground from a sweep kick from Shadow, who launches into the air. Sonic spin dashes out of the way as the black hedgehog's fist meets the ground creating a sizable hole. Right as Sonic thinks of uncurling, a barrage of bullets aimed in his direction makes him think otherwise, as he rolls around their source, Omega. Two cannons emerge from the robot's shoulders, and from them come a pack of missiles. I just can't catch a break! On Saturday, Sonic liked to race against trains in Grand Metropolis. It's never a close finish, but sometimes he'll decide on a handicap, such as no jumping or doing the entire thing backwards. So naturally, a pack of missiles is a cakewalk. Or at least it should have been. But one thing Sonic did not predict was for his black doppelganger to appear out of thin air right in front of him. Whatever his trick was, it most definitely wasn't speed. Chaos Spear! Sonic drops and slides across the icy mountain top. The cold ground is a nice comfort against the hot spear of burning energy that flies over him, nearly grazing his nose. A cocky smile spreads across Sonic's face, but when he looks back, it disappears as he sees the spear heading for one of the missiles. <laughs> uh oh. The fierce explosion spreads to the other missiles, resulting in a premature detonation that nearly deafens everyone present and sends a shockwave that carries the two hedgehogs 
through the air, and down the mountaintop. About 20 feet above the tight tunnel Rouge is currently digging through, violent vibrations and the sound of mighty explosions erupt above her, much to the bat's confusion. It's obvious her teammates have made contact with an enemy, which encourages her to dig even faster. It might be beneficial for both her and Mobius if she were to accidentally let the emerald fall into the hands of Gunn or a local task force, but she pushes the thought away. She's far too into this rabbit hole to risk getting onto Eggman's bad side. I've gone my entire life without getting attached to a job. Can't start now. Finally, her arms begin to slowly tire, but she refuses to let this treasure escape her grasp, especially with her allies counting on her. She holds her breath to protect her lungs from the excess of dust created from the destruction of solid earth the bat powers through. From her memory, she can't remember a time she's ever dug this hard. Rouge has begun to tune out the constant explosions and yelling on the surface when, much to her shock, an ear-piercing boom rattles her insides and nearly blows out her eardrums. A flash of yellow light floods into the hole she's in and the mountain trembles from the blast. With the loud noise and flash of light, the jewel thief nearly misses it, but its mere touch was unmistakable from the gravel and rock around it, the Chaos Emerald. Its white, perfect glow dazzles her eyes. Determined to escape captivity from its beauty, Rouge grabs onto the mysterious gem and pries it from the cold earth that has held it for so long. Her wings spread out and the bat hurriedly shoots up from the tunnel and into the light above. The first thing she sees upon emerging from the ground is the sheer amount of damage the mountaintop has suffered. Craters everywhere, snow having somehow melted away to light frost. It's clear a great battle took place while she was busy. Omega stands away from the hole at the edge of the mountain, overlooking something or someone that Rouge can't see at the moment. She holds the emerald in the air and yells for her ally's attention. Hey Omega, I got it! <gasps> her heart drops the moment she feels the weight of the priceless treasure leave her palm. Quickly, she looks up at the sky and spots the thieves almost immediately. They certainly weren't who she was expecting. The pink hedgehog she cornered in Metropolis now holds the emerald tightly in her hands as she uses the other to wield her large hammer. The yellow fox holds her by the shoulders, using his tails to fly. These kids don't quit. No one steals treasure from me. Like a rocket, the spy shoots after the pair, certain she'll reach them well before they can escape her range. Evidently, the fox had this same realization as he turns in her direction and stares in fear at the rapidly gaining bat. Another thing the young fox failed to predict, much like Rouge's speed, was his reliance on a guardian angel. A red blur crashes into the spy midair, knocking her out of the sky and sending her tumbling down the mountainside. Rouge manages to stop herself on a ledge and in front of her, the attacker lands. Someone else she recognizes and certainly wasn't expecting to see again. A mighty, undeniable, angry red echidna looks down at her, his fist clenched. Pick on somebody your own size, bat! Rouge grins and gets to her feet, cautious not to make any sudden moves that would provoke the warrior to attack. Well, don't you play rough. And here I was thinking you'd learn your lesson after challenging Shadow. So, Shadow is the name of the one who bested me. I'll keep that in mind for our rematch. Well, aren't you adorable? Even with his tough look, the Echidna's blushing cheeks don't go unseen by Rouge, further solidifying her statement. The comment caught him so off guard in fact, he failed to notice the ball of snow Rouge was able to swipe discreetly. Sorry to bail so soon, darling, but I have an emerald to steal back. Catch you later. She gives the confused warrior a wink before launching a snowball at his face. In his moment of brief blindness, Rouge spreads her wings and flies off, staring down at Knuckles who stares back. Was that Knuckles? Tails ascends higher in the sky, carrying the surprisingly light hedgehog away from the mountaintop with a mighty chaos emerald secured in their possession. Internally, the boy wants to celebrate for a mission success, but he holds off for two reasons. One, things are certainly not over, and two, Sonic is currently nowhere in sight. He isn't the only one concerned over this. Amy looks up at him and asks, Do you see Sonic anywhere? He almost responds, but is suddenly unable to breathe. 
A tightening, suffocating grip wraps around the boy's neck, causing him instant pain. Because of it, his grip on Amy loosens, and the pink hedgehog begins falling 22 feet from the air, with the white chaos emerald still in her grasp. She screams in fear during her fast descent to the ground, but she never makes it there. Instead of falling onto the cold, hard mountain, she lands in the warm embrace of her hero, Sonic the Hedgehog. Whew! Talk about a close call. Sonic is thankful he was able to speed up the mountain and make it just in time to save Amy. She blushes in his arms and clings to his neck, much to the war hero's annoyance. It's unclear what happened to the Black Hedgehog, but Sonic doesn't have time to think about that. No. What has his and Amy's full attention is the monster holding their mutual fox friend captive, Metal Sonic. The Metal Menace stands suspended in the air with its jet engine as it looks down at his counterpart, all while squeezing the air out of the struggling child in its inescapable clutches. Never in his life has Sonic felt so angry. Every muscle in his body wanted to jump up at his clone. But after what happened in Grand Metropolis, he needs more than his feet. Still putting your friends in danger, I see. I would say I expected better, but there's not much one can hope for considering a simpleton such as yourself. What do you want? Are you for real? Take a wild guess. Here's a hint. It rhymes with, give me the Chaos Emerald, or the fox perishes. I hope that wasn't too subtle. Unable to bear the sight of his suffering friend, Sonic acts quickly and takes the emerald from Amy. He gives her an assured look. Fine. If you want the emerald, take it. Without warning, Sonic chucks the emerald at his sinister doppelganger. However, as soon as the emerald leaves his hand, the hedgehog curls into a ball and shoots towards Metal Sonic at the speed of a rocket. Out of pure reflex, the robot throws Tails to the ground and uses its right arm to catch the emerald and the other to block his opponent's attack. He's then pushed through the air by the sheer force of energy against him. Impressive quick thinking. And yet, ultimately futile. Only a fool would prioritize their friends with so much at stake. Metal Sonic reels his head back and clashes it against Sonic's, sending him crashing into the snow below. Amy starts running to him, but he holds up a hurt arm, stopping her. He slowly pulls himself up. Get Tails and fly out of here! I'll deal with the ugly mirror. While he may be ugly, at least he is not outmatched. Huh? To the hedgehog's right is E123 Omega. Despite lacking any sort of facial expression, the machine's bloodlust is unmistakable, especially with its locked and loaded shoulder cannons and built-in machine guns aimed in the war hero's direction. You can say that again. A white bat in a hot pink uniform hovers in the air, staring at the blue hedgehog with an intrigued gaze. Sonic looks over to Tails and sees him in the air, holding on to Amy. With a confident smile and a thumbs up from his best friend, Tails reluctantly nods and carries Amy from the tent's summit. Thanks, Tails. I know how badly you want to help, but now this will be a lot simpler. In a blur, with no hesitation, Sonic sprints towards Omega, who begins firing dozens of bullets along with a collection of rockets at the approaching Mobian. Effortlessly, the Hedgehog dodges each of the incoming projectiles, feeling one of the rockets graze the fur of his arm. In a short time, he makes it to the robot and flips over the mechanical terror, ripping off a piece of its metal shoulder plating. With the plate now under his feet, Sonic lands on the mountainside and begins his rapid descent towards the bottom. To no surprise of his own, Sonic can hear the burning fuel of his robotic nemesis close behind. A weave to the right, and the young hero misses a swift strike from Metal Sonic, who flies in the pursuit of its target. This would be kind of fun, if there wasn't a mechanical android after me! Focus, Sonic! Focus! A surge of blinding energy materializes behind the hedgehog, who looks back to see a yellow electric aura surrounding his clone. Whatever it's happening, it's nothing good. With the speed and intensity of lightning, Metal Sonic shoots forward at its prey. Sonic was not ready for such a fast attack. He just barely manages to jump over it, landing back on the makeshift snowboard as he watches Eggman's sinister creation plow through snow, burning all of it in his wake. An explosion right in front of him causes Sonic to nearly tumble off the plating as the snow falls all around him. He recognized the bolt of energy that created such a blast, a chaos sphere. As soon as he reels his head, it's too late. The Black Hedgehog is already in the air, two fingers held up, ready to conjure another spear. 
Or at least he would if a white-knuckled fist hadn't caught him in the face, sending him crashing to the snow. Sonic's confusion dissipates when he hears from behind. Mind giving me a lift? Sonic the Conqueror? Sonic grins, holding onto his back his knuckles, joining him on his crazy ride down the mountain. <laughs> Didn't want to miss the action, Knucklehead. No way! Several yards ahead of them, the duo watch as Metal Sonic flies back into view, heading straight for its targets. He's almost as ugly as you. Get ready. This thing means business. By the way, that's just mean. The two allies brace themselves for an incoming threat when something else draws their attention. They turn around and their jaws drop simultaneously at the sight of a gargantuan mass of snow falling behind them. This just keeps getting better. What is going on? Oh, yeah. But down here we call those avalanches. If I had a guess, I think the Kala's explosions might have something to do with it. Metal Sonic extends its right arm, and from it emerges a cannon. It shoots out a rocket that Sonic and Knuckles steer from, shielding their eyes from the rain of snow that results from the violent explosion. With only a second to react, Sonic braces his arms together to block a kick from Shadow, who teleports in front of him, before the Black Hedgehog is once again knocked back by Knuckles. Refusing to relent, Shadow teleports back in front of the two as Metal Sonic materializes to the pair's right. The Ebony Hedgehog chops down at Sonic, who moves left of the blow as the Metal One attempts an uppercut on Knuckles, who instead ends up catching the fist. Before either of the friends can retaliate, the two attackers draw back. Shadow teleports to an unknown location, and Metal Sonic simply flies away. It becomes clear why once the Echidna looks behind him. Um, Sonic? Sonic turns around, just in time to see the giant sliding mass of snow right on top of them. <laughs> Their screams are subsequently silenced once the avalanche washes over them, effortlessly carrying their bodies with it. Three minutes later, the red, scanning eyes of the titanium blue hedgehogs survey over the endless pile of deep snow. Much to the hedgehog's annoyance, it's yet to pick up any vitals, particularly ones belonging to pancaked Mobians. To its right, Shadow stands with his arms crossed, ready to leave this freezing tundra. He begins to be distracted by his thoughts when he sees something overhead. Rouge making her way towards the two hedgehogs with the white chaos emerald metal handed to her before taking off to stop the war hero and his ally. She lands in front of the two, her presence not distracting Metal Sonic from scanning for its target's deceased bodies. That was quite a spectacle. Anyways, Eggman called. He wants his emerald. I am not leaving until I have verified the demise of my pathetic twin. And delay Eggman's flight for the fifth emerald? Metal Sonic stops scanning and turns to Rouge, silent for a few moments. Then, without any words, he takes off with the invisible egg carrier hovering above them. Rouge's attention turns to Shadow, who dons a look of concern. So, what's on your mind? Nothing. Just wondering where Zero is. Do you mind giving me a ride? Yes, but I'll give you one anyways. Shadow grins, her wings spread open as he takes her hand for liftoff. Once the two hover through the air and make it higher, Rouge looks down at the mass pile of snow below her. Please be alive, war hero. Unknown to her, Rouge's wish was already granted. If Metal Sonic had been scanning two miles below its previous location, with a few feet to the right, he would have surely detected Sonic and Knuckles' life signatures. If he had stayed two minutes longer, he would have even spotted them as Knuckles dug himself out and pulled Sonic to the surface. If Sonic thought it was cold before, he certainly did now after being buried underneath an avalanche of snow for five minutes. If it wasn't for Knuckles, those five minutes would have instead been an eternity. What a miserable way to go. He's left unsure if his thoughts or the unbearable temperature are what's causing him to shiver. Fortunately, he and Knuckles have long since made it from the mountain and have currently found themselves once again in the middle of nowhere. Knuckles doesn't seem to be bothered by the cold, but rather by something else. It doesn't take long for Sonic to guess what it is, one that might as well have been ingrained in their mouths. The bitter taste of utter defeat. Except for Knuckles, it must be worse. It's not as if Sonic can't completely relate to his struggle. 
With all the emeralds under Robotnik's possession, Angel Island has no chance. But the fate of all Mobians won't be any different. Everyone will answer to one ruler. Everything will be made to reflect one's image. No one, absolutely no one, will have any freedom. The Hedgehog remembers the high amount of casualties and destruction caused by the Metal War. He can never let anything like that ever happen again. Not if there's anything he can do about it. Sonic, look! Knuckles makes his exhausted ally perk up in curiosity as he points ahead, at a structure way off in the distance. Sonic squints his eyes and leans forward on one foot, trying to make out what it could be. It almost looks like... A cabin? He's surprised to see any sort of residential building in such a harsh, unfriendly climate. There's nothing out here for miles. Does someone actually live here? Let's find out. The relaxed echidna resumes his pace, heading in the direction of the cabin. Maybe whoever is inside can point us in the direction of civilization. Wow, that's actually a smart idea, Nux. Here, let me save you the walk. Before Knuckles can even open his mouth to protest, Sonic dashes forward at unseeable speeds and grabs the echidna's back, pulling him along for the two-second sprint towards the cabin. Now at the doorstep, Knuckles stumbles back, slightly dazed and still not used to going so fast. The gaze he gives his grinning blue ally is intense enough to melt steel, and yet, it only makes the grin on Sonic's mouth widen. After you... Sonic grabs the door handle and it cracks open. Sonic! What the deal? A pink rocket shoots through the cabin, tackling the petrified hedgehog to the ground in an inescapable hug. I knew you'd be okay! When we saw the avalanche, it was so scary and... The pink hedgehog's arms are tied around his neck. Knuckles stands up, a smirk glued to his face, satisfied with the quick work of karma. Thanks for saving me the walk. And here I thought I was a fan. The unfamiliar, elderly voice comes from within the cabin, making everyone turn to its source. A human man stands at the doorway. He wears a hulky, furry leather coat that makes his skinny frame appear much bigger. His wrinkled face spots large gray eyebrows, and his smile is the only warm thing in this environment. He holds up a hand and waves. Greetings, War Hero. This is most certainly a surprise I wasn't expecting. To his relief, Amy gets off the surprised Blue Hedgehog, allowing him to stand up and make a proper introduction. Same here. I never thought I'd see a human this far in the outskirts. Especially here of all places. Neither did your lovely friend here. The man motions to Amy, who responds with a cheery smile. It's a shame things haven't changed much since I've been gone. Oh well, we can talk more inside. The elderly man recedes back into the cabin, followed by Sonic, Amy, and Knuckles. Inside for what it is, the man's home is simply cozy. At the back of the small cabin is a lively, crackling fireplace that gives pretty, natural light to the entirety of the building. Along the walls are picture of the man, except much younger likely in his 30s or 40s. One showcases him standing over a dead deer, rifle in hand, smiling proudly at the game he'd been hunting. Displayed on the top of the left side wall is a moose head, which Knuckles stares at with slight interest. Is that real? Why, yes. Not a lot of game come around here, but I found that big fella two years back. That was a fine meal. I see you're quite the hunter. I respect that old man. Please, call me James. The old man sits down on a worn-out mattress at the side of the room. Sonic turns around to Amy. Hey, um, where's Tails? Out looking for you! We both stumbled on this cabin and he dropped me off! Knowing him, he'll stay out there all night. Hopefully he sees our footprints and puts two and two together. You have quite some interesting friends, Sonic. That little boy could fly. I appreciate your hospitality, sir, but if I may ask, what are you doing all the way out here? Most, uh, pretty much all humans live in Station Square. James rolls his eyes. Don't remind me of that, dump. That was my home for years. I loved that place. Until Gunn took it over. With the way most people viewed you Mobians, I had to get out of that prison sooner or later. At least here, there's no discrimination. No politics. Just peace and quiet. It's impressive that you even made it out here. How are you not always freezing? Must have gotten used to the weather. James shrugs, earning an improving nod from Knuckles. If I may ask, what are you doing here? Ain't no famous people use you around these parts. Now caught with a loaded question, the impatient hedgehog doesn't feel like answering in full. 
He shakes his head and defaults to... <sighs> it's a long story. Uh, to sum things up, we're, uh, sort of lost. He scratches his head awkwardly. Starlight? It's quite the distance. A 674 mile drive. I occasionally ride there for supplies using my R6900X. Uh, RC what? The three Mobians each stare at the old man as if he spoke some long-forgotten ancient language. Noticing this, he grins a little and goes further into detail. My snowmobile. Since Icecap has no roads, there's a special model of car you can buy only in Metropolis, and Starlight that's built for snow travelers. Had to sell a large portion of my very roads to even come near affording one. Hearing that sentence, it's like a ray of sunshine from the heavens pierces the gloomy clouds and shines down with all of its glory on the hopeful hedgehog. It can't be, but it appears so. Finally, after all these hours, a break. How many people can this RC what's its seat? I say his mass capacity is about eight. Could be a little crammed though, hee <laughs> hee. Sir, would you mind giving you a ride? How could I refuse the savior of Mobius? Let me get my- A loud slam at the cabin's entrance startles its current occupants. Standing at the entrance to the cabin, with the door wide open and all eyes on him is Tails, who's breathing rapidly with his eyes closed. After catching his breath, he looks forward with worry. I couldn't find- The young boy's sentence gets caught in his throat once his eyes fully adjust and his brain has time to process the sight in front of him. Sonic crosses his arms, a humorous smirk on his face. Sup, little buddy. How do you feel about road trips? It's becoming more clear with each passing victory that Eggman's gratitude is quickly starting to turn to entitlement. A reality evident when he snatches the silver emerald from Rouge's hand. A sharp grimace glued to his face as he looks at Rouge before turning back to his new addition to his emerald collection. He sits cross-legged, his back eased into the comforting red fabric of his floating metal chair, admiring the glow of something so few could ever wish to get their hands on. The doctor eyes Rouge with a slightly curious gaze. What took you so long? We're in the middle of nowhere! This should have been a simple in and out operation! It would have been, but Sonic and his friends got- Sonic? You mean to tell me that blue rodent still caught up to us? My badniks blew that miserable little rat out of the sky! Why hasn't he been dealt with yet? You of all people should know that's easier said than done, Doctor. If I was his sole challenger, he would have been no match, Your Excellence. <sighs> no matter. So far, I'm ahead of that miserable punk by four. It won't be long now. His efforts will result in nothing. Speaking of nothing, where is Zero? Upon asking the question, everyone in the large control room takes notice of a missing grumpy jackal standing beside Eggman's chair, cross-armed. Each of them look around, expecting the jackal himself to answer Eggman's question, but that answer doesn't come. He's nowhere to be seen. Is it possible that worthless sack of nothing decided to not show himself after failing me yet again? If so, that's the one competent thing I've ever seen him do. Only one person has the answer. Metal? As if waiting for his cue, Metal Sonic flies into the control room, his thunderous thrusters coming to a slow, quiet whirl before dying down completely. The Metal Hedgehog stands in front of the three members of Team Dark, kneeling on one knee. Yes, my maliciousness. What happened to your partner? Zero set off with you, did he not? Why hasn't he returned? I meant to inform you earlier, my liege. My partner defected. After such blasphemous claims that you should recognize his value, he attempted to shut me offline and come back here to finish you off. So I reacted appropriately. I took his head off and left his body to be buried under Ice Cap's never ending snow. At first, Eggman doesn't really know how to react to such surprising news. Sure, Zero had an ego, but to try and overthrow him of all people? As the reality of Zero's betrayal gradually sets in, a proud grin spreads across Eggman's bushy mustache. 
he holds a prideful hand over his remarkable creation. Ha 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 ha! I can always count on you, Sonic! Let Zero be one of many examples of what happens when you try and cross the great Dr. Eggman! Your services are recognized. This honor is too great of a reward for me, Master. Allow me to prove myself further by eradicating all that stands in your way. Gun, Mobians, my doppelganger. All will fall in your wake. As the two continue talking, Shadow and Rouge exchange glances they both pick up on immediately. Neither of them know how it is obvious, and yet, they know with full certainty that Zero wasn't the aggressor. He was the victim. This time you held me in your arms The whole world fell under a spell The great adventures would connect our hearts That secret love was sealed in the rain Oh boy, come walk with me And together we'll uncover every key Dreams unbound, where our fantasy will be set free. I wanna know to be alone with you on the rising hill secretly. Like the birds all around are free to fly, watching over you and I till the dawn. Someday I know this love will glow Leading hand in hand the way through the mist To the road that'll shine Open to find souls intertwined Till the end of time Did this a shattered mind Locked in my heart Pain you'll never see It doesn't matter Cause I'll always find Your shining smile And my heart's at peace Oh boy You never show Any fear or inhibition Only hope I wanna hold on to be like you